All right, so we're getting ready to run a race, right? And you step up to the starting blocks, and the gun goes off, and you start out so strong. You carbo-loaded the right amount the night before, you ate all the right foods, you did all the training, and you take off with the energy that you've just prepared for, right? But things don't always go that way, right? Our muscles start to cramp up, things get sore, and we kind of stop, and we kind of start to worry, and we kind of, things get hard and difficult. Sometimes it feels like you can't finish your race and you can't keep going. What happens then? Well, we're going to look at our verse today. And this is our verse today. I think it's going to be up on the screen. Hebrews 12, verse 1 through 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Right there in the middle, it tells us, let us run this race. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. If you've heard me talk at all, I do like to go look up the the dictionary term, so just Go with it here. The word endurance, it means the fact or power of enduring an unpleasant or difficult process or situation without giving way. Think about that. In this verse, he's telling us we, he's, he endured. He, it's going to be unpleasant and it's going to be difficult. That's what endurance means. But like Jerry talked about just recently, there are so many things that are out of our control that we cannot control our circumstances Sometimes our race seems to be going uphill and we can't get off of that hill and we just keep going up. But God tells us in his word that you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. In John 16, he tells us two things in this verse, two things. We should expect trouble or suffering and we should expect Christ's victory. He is the one that is victorious. Trouble and victory. Two things right there in that verse that we have to take note of. The victory is that he has overcome the world, and we are to look past the troubles and circumstances to the end of our race, our prize, Christ. So I want to go back to this idea of expecting trouble, because Our circumstances aren't going to be neatly packaged in this nice little package with a beautiful bow. It's not going to be like that. Our circumstances are going to change. Just look past 18 months. 18 months ago. These last 18 months have been so difficult. The trials that people faced, and I know that this year was rough for so many people, and none of it, none of it was in our control. We all have moments where we feel like we just can't keep going. Trials and suffering can overwhelm us and can make us feel like we're floundering, can't float, can't keep our head above water. But when we choose to run this race with Jesus, it's just so much better. When we choose to run this race with Jesus, there are still going to be things that pull us off our path. Remember those race arrows that we've talked about and a little bit earlier? Sometimes those race arrows can be flipped around, turned over. Maybe they're missing. And you're asking God, where do I even go? Galatians 5, verse 7 through 8 says this. You were running well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion is not from him who calls you. The enemy is real, and he wants to kill, steal, and destroy, but God wants to give you life, and he wants it abundantly. I, I remember um, <laughs> when I first joined, uh, I didn't grow up in a Christian home. I didn't grow up going to church, and I, I remember um, when I first joined this race with Jesus, uh, 
I felt like I had to have everything perfect. You know, I, I, I gave my life over and I thought, cool, everything's going to be perfect. Everything's going to be great. And it felt victorious and glorious and all these things. I had this expectation that I would not encounter anything difficult. That if I did all the right things, I checked all the boxes, I prayed hard enough, that that it, it would just all go my way. This burden that I started to carry because of the expectations that I put on myself were so heavy. This pressure that I thought I had to live up to, this standard that I thought I had to live up to, I, it, it was just so heavy for me to carry. I, I, I laugh telling Nate this, but I, this analogy came to my head. But it was, it was kind of like I was just adding on this gospel, this beautiful gospel. I was adding it on as like a little side salad. $5.99, going to add it to my meal. I'll do it when I want. I'll have a salad. I kind of want french fries tonight, though. I really don't want to eat the salad, right? Here's the thing I had to learn about this gospel, is that it's not a side dish. It's not what Jerry said about taking the little boxes and going to the cafeteria. That cracked me up, by the way, because only God knew that I was going to talk about a side salad, and here Jerry's talking about a cafeteria. Like, then it doesn't happen. Only God. But here's the thing about the gospel that I had to learn. It's not a side dish. It's a full meal deal. It is a full meal deal. Life-changing, full-on surrender. Lay it at your feet, God. When I finally learned that I, I couldn't do it all, I couldn't be it all, that I could surrender it to God, which I still struggle with every day, every day. And Nate continues to challenge me to pick up my cross daily and surrender it. We talk about it on our Monday night calls. We talk about it with other referees, and Nate and I talk about it as a couple. It's a daily surrender, and I struggle to do that. And I think if we're all honest, we do that too. We struggle to surrender daily. Just because I gave my life over to Christ doesn't mean that everything's going to be easy, that everything's going to be great and grand. It doesn't take the pain or the difficult moments away. It doesn't. In James, in James 1, verse 2 through 4, it says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness And let steadfastness have its full effect that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. It's during these moments that God wants us to transform to be more like him. God wants to take our circumstances and he wants to move us and he wants to transform our hearts to be more like Jesus. To walk surrendered to God the Father. To hand over control. God is sovereign. He is so sovereign. He is. But if we truly believe that, we cannot take up all of our circumstances and hold them. We cannot put more Band-Aids on or drink more Gatorade to run a few more miles. No, we can't do that. Those Band-Aids and the Gatorade, the the Gatorade may help for a couple more miles, and the Band-Aids, they may hold for like a month, maybe a year, maybe even two years or longer. But it will be temporary. It will. It will not be eternal. Because God, God is the one that's victorious. We've all found ourselves in these trials and tribulations. And I think if you you haven't, Maybe you're just not aware of it, because I think we've all had moments, right? And sometimes, like Jerry said, it's not the big plane crash, but we all have our own plane crash. We all have our own moments. And sometimes I can even feel like I'm running in circles, right? I'm running in circles. I'm spiritually dry. I need electrolytes, and I have no idea where to find them, because I am just running. And the enemy, he wants to keep me running. He wants me in those circles. He wants to keep me there. 
He wants me to believe my anxieties, my worries, my self-doubt. He wants me to believe that my suffering, that the reason I'm suffering is because I deserve it. That's where the enemy wants to keep me. But God, God, we, we have to stop the circling. We have to turn our eyes to Jesus. So in these moments of just where we feel like we can't go on, what do we do? Where do we turn? I, I've, never, uh, I've never claimed to be a professional. I've never claimed to be anything else. But these are three things that have helped me on my journey. These are three things that um, when I was in my midst of, uh, of working through my plane crashes and working through um, our marriage struggles, these are the things that, um, that helped me. Number one is um, rest. Oh, God calls us to rest. And, I mean, we may laugh about it, and we're laughing about it because there's all different people, right? There's all different people that can talk to people, and they can love people, and they can talk to people all the time, but, oh, I'm an introvert. This is not me. I mean, I can fake it. I will fake this out till I make it. But I need rest, and God calls us to rest. He tells us to rest in his word. We have to be intentional with our rest. We cannot just keep playing, just keep going. Be intentional, plan it. One of our goals is we sit down and we've, we have really need to work on this, but we have um, really tried to plan out our rest for our family, right? Set time, set aside time where no phones, no computers, no one else, just our family. And then I need time to rest by myself. Number two is set small goals. When we're deep in our suffering, it feels like we can't get out. We're in this valley and we just, we can't, we can't get out. So set small goals. For me, that was, one of my goals was, anytime a negative thought entered my work, in my head, because my head, if you don't do this, your head can kind of go crazy sometimes and tell you all the things that you do wrong and you don't do well. Anytime I would hear those negative thoughts, my small goal was I was going to squash it with the word of God because God's word is glorious and he says some amazing things about me. But until I, can, I have to squash what the enemy is trying to come at me with. So set small goals. Maybe that's just one of them. I'm going to squash the enemy's thoughts. Number, and maybe it's just I'm going to read my Bible every day. Maybe I'm going to plan rest. But it's kind of like when you're running a race and you kind of start to lose a little bit of stamina and speed and you can't keep going. It's kind of like you make a goal. I'm just going to make it to the blue house. So I'll stop when I get to the blue house. I'm going to run to the blue house. When I get there, I'm going to stop. You make it to the blue house. Like, cool. I can go a little farther. Right? Now I'm going to make it to the big tree. It's the same thing in our walk with Jesus. Set those small goals and keep going. Number three, ha. Huh? This is my favorite. Dig deep into God's word. Because if we're not in God's word, we can't fight. We can't fight the enemy that's coming after us. If we don't know God's word, I don't know what he says about me. You don't know what he says about you. But we also need to be able to hear him. And when we hear him, we have to be into God's word. I don't, I don't know if this one's up on the screen, so I don't know. But because I added some stuff last minute because I felt. But Psalm 40, verse 1 through 2, I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the pit of destruction out of the fire bog and set my feet upon the rock, making my steps secure. Oh, he hears you. He hears me. In my pit of destruction, he is going to hear me. This is my favorite. And this is one verse Psalm 61, verse 1 through 3, and you can take all of Psalm 61, because I love Psalm 61, and when I am struggling, this is where I go every single time. Hear my cry, O God, listen to my prayer from the end of the earth I call to you. When my heart is faint, lead me to the rock that is higher than I, for you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. Oh, (laughs) and I'm going to leave you here with this one, Philippians 4, verse 6 through 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, 
by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. In this world, we are going to have trouble. It's going to come. But when we keep our eyes focused on Jesus, there is a peace that will surpass all understanding. Just like we talked about just a few minutes ago, the peace will come. 